Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our live coverage of Boeing's Pad Abort Test. We are coming to you live from the desert out at the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. I'm NASA's Dan Hewitt, and I have the privilege today to be joined by Jessica Landa with Boeing for what's going to be a very exciting and dynamic morning. That's right, Dan. It's an absolute pleasure to be out here with you. I mean, it is such a beautiful morning today on the out at the desert. And could be a little warmer. It could definitely be a little warmer. We were struggling a couple of days ago, weren't we? Um, but we just could not ask for a, a, a more beautiful morning for Starliner's very first flight test, Pad Abort, which is really one of the last major milestones ahead of crew flight. And there's going to be a lot of stuff happening really quickly. And again, it's going to be a really dynamic test. So let's kind of paint a picture for what people are going to see today. Yeah, so at this point, we're about nine minutes away from liftoff. And uh, Dan and I here, we are uh, about five miles west of the test stand. Um, and the Mission Director Center is another uh, 500 feet or so west of us. So we did our launch minus 30 poll about, uh, what was it, 20 minutes ago, all, all good. Uh, all goes across the board. The wind at this point, that windsock over there behind us is really barely moving, wind slightly out of the east, so we are looking really good. And there's just, uh, there's a couple of key objectives that we're gonna be looking for today. What are we really, because obviously we're gonna see those launch abort engines fire. That's gonna be the first that's gonna kick off a really quick sequence of this mm -hmm. pad abort. Yeah, so absolutely. So pad abort test is really uh, a test of Starliner's end-to-end -end functionality of our abort system. So, you know, we have to make sure that we can keep the crew safe in the unlikely event that there's an emergency. And Starliner's abort system is really designed to be able to successfully abort at all phases of flight. So not just on the pad, but all the way up the ascent profile. And, you know, we've tested this system at the component level. We've tested at the, you know, subsystem level. And now we're testing at the integrated system performance level. So we really want to make sure that all these systems are going to work together. Together, um, so that we can keep our crew safe. So some of the things that you really want to keep in, in mind is we really want those launch abort engines to be able to propel that spacecraft um, away from the, the launch vehicle adapter that's actually right there at the pad uh, today, uh, filling in for United Launch Alliance's Atlas V rocket. So we've got four major launch abort engines, 40,000 pounds of thrust each, and we've got um, about a dozen or so OMAX, which are orbital maneuvering and attitude control thrusters, 1,500 pounds each. So we really want to see them propel that spacecraft safely away uh, in the unlikely event of an emergency. You know, the next thing you want to really look out for is, is guidance, navigation, and control. You know, we really have to be in control of that spacecraft the whole time, and it's got to go in the general direction that we need it to go, right? Especially on, on launch day, if this were the real thing, we've got to be able to make it over to the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and then, you know, all of our separation events have to work properly. You got to see the parachute sequence, um, you know, jettison and uh, and uh, initiate correctly. And then really one of the other main separation events that I just want to mention for you is you're going to see the service module separate from the crew module. Mm -hmm. And that's a really critical separation event. And I'm going to walk you through an animation here in just a minute. But before I do that, just keep in mind that service module is going to separate from the crew module. It's going to free fall to the ground and some residual propellant uh, that's left over in that vehicle may actually ignite uh, and it may flame a little bit and you might actually see some a colored smoke trail uh, but that is exactly what we expect to happen uh, keep in mind if this were the real thing it'd be landing in the ocean but yeah. today it's landing on the desert so if we see some extra fireworks today it is expected and that's that's you'll be seeing what we expect yeah so why don't we go through the animation yeah it's absolutely expected I mean this is gonna be a really dynamic couple of minutes let me take you through it here so you're gonna have those launch abort engines ignite. Those LAEs are gonna fire for about five seconds. Those OMAX are gonna continue to fire intermittently for another five seconds. And that just gets the spacecraft uh, in the right trajectory. Um, and then just, this is all gonna go pretty fast. Before you know it, uh, the spacecraft is gonna start to do its pitch around mover, maneuver, which gets itself in the proper orientation to land. You're gonna see that ascent cover and that forward heat shield jettison together, followed by the parachute sequence. Two drogue parachutes, 
parachutes, uh, followed by three pilot parachutes. That's jobs are really just to bring out the mains. Um, and then you're going to see three main parachutes deploy. And really, you know, parachutes are really pulling double duty here because not only are they designed to bring the crew module safely and slowly back down to the ground, but they're also being jettisoned at the proper time or deployed at the proper time to, to make sure the spacecraft is in the proper orientation to properly separate that service module from the crew module. But like I said, you want to keep your eyes on that crew module because that's where, our, of course, our precious cargo is. Uh, about 60 seconds into flight, that base heat shield is going to jettison, and that allows for those gorgeous landing airbags to deploy. You know, keep in mind here, Starliner is going to be the very first uh, American-made orbital crew capsule to land on land, and you're going to get a bit of a preview of that today. That's right, and we've been out here a couple of times doing those landing tests. Mm -hmm. One of the prime landing zones for Starliner is going to be here at the Whitestone Space Harbor, actually right by an old runway that the shuttle landed on one time mm -hmm. in its program on STS-3. So a lot of exciting stuff happening today. It is important to note, I mean, this is, this is a challenging test. We're really putting the vehicle in kind of one of the most dynamic situations it could possibly be in. You're, Correct. you're simulating getting the crew out of uh, an extremely dangerous situation. And at NASA, we have some pretty recent history with just how important systems like these are. Our astronaut Nick Haig, uh, just last year in October, was on a Russian Soyuz spacecraft, and uh, it aborted while he was on his way uphill, but he was able to land successfully thanks to an abort system, uh, along with his crewmate, uh, Alexei Ovchinin. So really important test here today, a really important system, but it just feeds into what we need to do to make sure when we're ready to go put crew on one of these spacecraft, they're going to be in a safe place. Oh, absolutely. You know, I think the Boeing team thinks about that all the time. You know, we are constantly uh, thinking about safety and how we can absolutely make sure that our crew is uh, in the safest vehicle that we could possibly make. You know, I, I just want to, you know, show you some video actually uh, from the Starliner Production Factory in Florida uh, when back when they were signing this spacecraft. Um, you know, this the gentleman you see signing it here. His name is Kevin, and he's one of our lead technicians. He's told me before, you know, hey, Jess, if something's not right, I'm not going to sleep tonight. I'm going to come in the next day and we're going to get it. We're going to get it right. Um, and, you know, you see here, uh, you've got our Boeing uh, president and CEO of uh, Boeing Defense Space and Security, Leanne Corrette, who is um, signing the spacecraft now. You can see her signing uh, a little note to her father, who actually worked on the Apollo program. Uh, so, um, Leanne was actually born on the Space Coast, so the Space Heritage is, is in her family and, you know, the entire Boeing team uh, is behind uh, space in this particular program. Yep. And we're actually hearing on, on our loops mm -hmm. right now that they are going to be in a hold for a second. We're going to take a few moments and figure out what's happening, but we're still getting some great views of Starliner on its pad uh, with that service module. So stay with us for just a couple of moments. We'll get a new updated time on what our countdown was. Yeah, and again, we are currently in a hold. We're just still standing by to see what issue the teams are working. We'll get a new T-Zero time 
to you hopefully in just a little bit. But we do have a three hour window today. Yes, so seven o'clock mountain was right at the start of our window. So there is plenty of time for the teams to, you know, take it slowly, make sure they're not working any issues before we see Starliner take to the air. That's right. And, you know, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about that team. Uh, our flight director for today is actually Alicia Evans. Uh, Alicia led the team through uh, Starliner's environmental qualification uh, testing, uh, a campaign that, you know, we really passed with flying colors. Uh, so we are incredibly proud of Alicia, uh, excited uh, to hear her on the flight loop today. Um, and then you'll also be hearing from Jim Harder. He is our flight dynamics officer. Uh, you're going to hear him uh, coming up here in just a little bit. Go ahead and, and give us all of the milestones as they happen during the test. Uh, you know, but you know, while we wait, I actually want to take us back and roll some video here of, of the team rolling out the spacecraft in preparation for launch. Uh, so this was actually, and we'll kind of give our, our production team a second here to, to kind of get that video ready to go. But, you know, one, what was really incredible about this operation is it's one of the, the most hazardous and complicated operations that the team will do. You see the spacecraft here coming out of the, uh, 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 the FIDIF, which is our uh, test facility here on site at Launch Complex 32, and you see it roll out. Um, of that of that building. Now this entire operation uh, took, uh, they started about five o'clock in the morning, it took them until about 10 o'clock to kind of get it up into place. Uh, but just think about it, this is a fully fueled vehicle that they're rolling out here. Uh, and I believe it was a 100 ton crane that they used to get it up onto the gantry. Wow. Um, and then, you know, they had to hand torque 278 volts to get it in place. Uh, so really, really uh, proud of the team there. You know, they had practiced for a couple of weeks. Jeff Bertelson, who is our uh, recovery lead for this test, uh, was telling us about it the other day. And, uh, you know, they practiced with some of what we call our boilerplate mm -hmm. uh, vehicles, which are what we use to, to practice our landing uh, airbags and our parachutes with. Uh, so just really proud of them, and, and they really got the job done. Yeah, and the rest of the team, they've been on console since at least 10 o'clock of last night. So they've been working through the overnight hours to get everything ready for our test today. Again, we have a three hour window. It just opened at seven teams. If you're just now joining, they are taking a look at a couple of things on the spacecraft. Mm -hmm. So we're waiting on a T, Z, T minus zero. But as soon as we hear it, we will be letting you know. But still grading, getting some great views. We're going to have views via some tracking cameras from the White Sands folks uh, here at Wismer. They do a lot of uh, missile testing and things like that. So they have things, they have these cameras that can track things going very fast mm -hmm. through the air. So it's perfect for a test like today. Yeah. Uh, and this is also gonna be one of the prime landing so sites, yeah. if not the prime for yeah. Starliner once it's flying. You know, I gotta say the White Sands Missile Range and White Sands, uh, they're just incredible partners of ours. The United States Army, we really could not do it without them. You know, they're so, such an integral, an integral part of the Starliner team. You know, like you said, we've got two landing zones here at White Sands. Um, this is also uh, where we, we do our parachute testing, right on the other side of the mountain here. Uh, in addition to that, this is where we did our service module hot fire test and of course our pad abort test today. So we could not do it without the, the U.S. Army and uh, White Sands. Uh, they're incredible partners of ours. And I, from what I understand, you, uh, you're pretty familiar with White Sands as well, are you not? Yeah, we actually used the exact same stand for our Orion spacecraft's pad abort a few years ago. Uh, and I've had the opportunity to come out with the Boeing teams a couple of times now to do these practices uh, for landing and recovery. It's really exciting. I've got some experience doing it over in Kazakhstan with the mm -hmm. Russian Soyuz. This is completely different, completely different environment, completely different team. Uh, but it's it's really exciting. It's usually a little bit warmer when we're out here. I think it usually gets up around 100 uh, yeah. during the summer because we've been out here in July and August. It's a little cooler this morning, mm -hmm. but it's not too bad. And we haven't had any weather constraints as we heard earlier. No, we um, have not. You know, I think, um, you know, it did get a little cold. So I know the team was looking at our helium tanks, you know, wanting to make sure that they stay at the right temperature uh, overnight. And, you know, we do have a little bit of a, of a wind constraints, 15 knots, but that's really just so that we can get the gantry rolled back. Um, so, you know, the, this, the weather has been, has been fine. And, and um, <clears throat> you know, it's, I'm really excited to watch this test happen because, you know, we're gonna go about, what, 650 miles an hour in probably about five seconds. There's gonna be so many dynamic events happening that we're gonna get data on uh, during this two minute test. Uh, and I know this is one in particular that the team's really excited to see happen.
That's right. And again, if you're just joining us, we are waiting on a new T minus zero, so new launch time for the pad abort. Does sound like we're getting close. We're going to just pause for a moment, listen in, and then we should be able to get you that new launch time in just a moment. All right, and we are here and we do have a new T minus zero time. We're now looking at 715 mm -hmm. Mountain, 915. Yep, it looks like the team was just taking another look at uh, propellant pressurization. Want to take another look at what they saw on screen and they say, hey, you know, we're, we're still doing okay. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, reset to 715. And um, that is taking a look at the clock here. That is not too far away at all, is it? Um, yeah, we should hard just for us to be about clock. seven minutes seven away minutes now away. Great. Um, from this liftoff. If, and again, if you're just joining, our original T0 was seven, mm -hmm. worked a quick prop issue. Now we're good to go at 7.15. That's right. If you want, why don't we show them again? Because this is going to be a really dynamic, a really quick test. As Jessica said, 650 miles an hour in just five seconds. Mm -hmm. So that thing is going to shoot off that pad really quickly. Yep. And why don't you walk us through again one more Absolutely. time? Absolutely. So, and that's so. exactly what we want to see, right? We want to see all those launch aboard engines fire with those OMAX, and we want to see that spacecraft really shoot off that launch pad. Uh, like you said, 650 miles an hour in about five seconds. Um, we're going to hit Apogee here pretty quickly. I think uh, we hit it in about 19 seconds. We're going to start to make that pitch around maneuver that just gets the spacecraft in the right orientation to open up that land landing sequence uh, and that's initiated really by when once you see that ascent cover and forward heat shield come off that really allows the parachute sequence to begin you're going to see two drogue parachutes uh, followed by three uh, pilot shoots and um, that really just bring out the mains there and again those those parachutes they're really pulling double duty here for this test not only do they have extra weight of the service module attached right and their their main job is really to make sure that they bring that crew module down slowly 
slowly and safely. But in addition to that, they're deploying at a certain time that kind of pulls the spacecraft back and gets it in a proper orientation to safely uh, release that service module. Um, then you're going to see, you know, that bucket handle release like you just saw. Uh, that's uh, that's also pretty critical. That allows us to, you know, come down nicely in uh, stable one, which is just right on the top of our airbags. Um, and then you you would see that base heat shield jettison, which allows those landing airbags to deploy. Uh, and I got to tell you, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing that today. You know, our team has worked so hard to make sure we can design a system that is safe and is also one that's reusable and landing on land. You know, these Starliner crew modules are reusable spacecraft. Uh, and one of the ways that we're able to do that is because we land on land. Yeah, and important to add again for people, the service module is going to come off and it is going to impact the ground and there mm -hmm. will be some residual fuel on board that may ignite. So mm -hmm. if you see that, it is totally expected. Yep. And as we talked about, they're going to land on land for the real thing. But if we were in a paddleboard scenario on a real day, mm -hmm. they have the Atlantic Ocean that they'd be going over. So that service module will be dropping in the water, followed shortly after by the crew capsule under the parachutes. That's correct. And, you know, we can talk just a little bit, too, about how uh, the team plans to do some of the recovery after today's test is complete. So the, the crew module, of course, will be uh, recovered, taken back to Launch Complex 32 for evaluation and analysis. And we really want to make sure uh, that uh, we get all the data back off that, that crew module. We, do, we are flying an anthropomorphic test dummy in there. And uh, so we want to get all the data back from, from the, our ATD as well. And that data is really critical. So we're going to go out, we're going to recover it, we'll bring it back to the launch site for, for evaluation and analysis. Now, the service module is a little different. Uh, and a combined team of Boeing, uh, the U.S. Army, and uh, an environmental and industrial services company called Clean Arbors is actually going to go out. We're going to safe the vehicle and then properly dispose of it. And I think that is going to be a process that will take probably uh, two or three days. You know, we do have a, some data that we're hoping to get off the service mm -hmm. module, too. Uh, but I guess that will depend on the state that it's in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but we're less than five minutes away. Again, that launch That's time right. right now is set for 7.15 Mountain, 9.15 Eastern Time. Uh -huh. In just a couple of minutes, we're going to bring up the, the actual launch control loop where you're going to be able to hear the flight director and some of the other folks. Again, walk us through who's who are we going to be hearing on these loops this morning? Yeah, so once again, you're going to be hearing from Alicia Evans. She is our flight director today. And Alicia, like I said before, led our environmental qualification test campaign. And that was a really critical uh, test campaign for us because what we do is we go ahead and we build a full spacecraft and then we send it off to California. Our folks at El, Seg El Segundo out there, uh, they were just amazing as for our environmental uh, qualification campaign. And what we do is we shake it and bake it is kind of what we say in the spacecraft world where we make sure that we put it through the exact same conditions that it's going to see on orbit we make sure that you know it can handle the you know the swings in temperature you know the uh you know radiation and all of those types of things and like i said passed with flying colors alicia led that campaign she is now leading starliner's very first flight test uh, we could not be more proud of her. And then once again, you're also going to hear from Jim Harder. He is our flight dynamics officer today. So you'll hear the liftoff line coming from Alicia. And then the rest of the events in the sequence, you're going to hear from Jim. So at this point, we are T minus two minutes and proceeding to launch. So Dan and I are going to go on ahead and listen right on in with you. Go Starliner. <laughs> Flight is slick. All commands are complete. Copy that, slick. Stand by for final abort command. Copy that. L minus one minute and counting. Fifty seconds. Forty.
30 seconds and counting. Twenty seconds and counting. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Lift off. Pro complete. How many cut off? On track. Home at cut off. Pitch around. Forty he killed parachute. Broke parachute's main. SM7. Two mains fully disreef. AC shield jettison. Airbags inflating. CM touchdown. All right, well, we have Starliner taking to flight for the very first time and touch, touching down safely and beautifully on the desert floor. Uh, that was just incredible, Dan. It's kind of hard not to get a little bit emotional over here just watching it, but that was that was phenomenal. Initial indication is that we've had a very successful paddleboard test today. That's right. It, it went off, it lit off, and I mean, when you're standing here watching it in person, that thing's really moving when you see it get up off the pad. And then the sound hits you about five or six seconds later, you just get that rumble across the desert floor as Starliner is already streaking through the sky. Absolutely, and to see it touch down like that. Now you did see touch down under two good mains, um, which is is certainly within the bounds of the acceptable uh, uh, acceptable bounds for this particular test. We have tested with two good mains and qualification, and that is acceptable for our landing sequence. Um, so this was just incredible. It was incredible to watch this test, uh, and it was just absolutely unbelievable. We're going to take a, just a little look at a replay here. Uh, again, I hope you didn't blink. Uh, uh, because 650 miles an hour in five seconds, uh, that thing sure did shoot off the test stand, didn't it? Um, you have those the launch abort engines firing, uh, those four launch abort engines, 40,000 pounds of thrust off the stand, OMAX, uh, another 1,500 pounds of thrust each on those. Those continue to continue to fire. Flight you saw the, uh, the, um, the pilot parachutes pulling out the mains there after that pitch around maneuver. Um, and uh, and then, of course, you saw the service module Light. at some point fall MTP away. Um, and uh, and it just, I mean, what an absolutely beautiful sight. Parachutes really doing, doing their job Light. here in MTP terms of Tedris making sure that they, they can PA1. get the spacecraft in the right orientation to safely release that service module down to the ground. Um, and, of course, you know, we want to keep our eyes on on uh, that, that crew module. You know, I think our, our folks uh, back in Florida are going to be really interested uh, to see the data come out of this test today for sure. And again, we saw two, two out of three parachutes, but mm -hmm. that is a stable condition. And that just kind of goes into what we have in space flight redundancy. And yep, if you've absolutely. ever been around anyone from NASA or Boeing or any of the space companies, redundancy, redundancy, we have backups for our backups, that yep. whole thing. And that's just really a great example of how you're able to work even when things don't go exactly as they're designed. Yeah, and, and so actually we could have, we, um, you know, our fault tolerance on that is really, you know, one, one drogue out 
as well as, as one main out. So we do have redundancy, like you said, built in. Uh, and it's just, again, I, I, it's just so incredible to see those landing airbags uh, on our spacecraft touchdown. Uh, you know, it's going to be incredible to watch it on a return to mission um, here coming up. Uh, Right around the corner, December yeah, right in the uh, 17th. Yep, absolutely. You know, uh, to I, I know, I just want to give a quick shout out to our folks uh, at the Starliner Production Factory in Florida that I know are watching right now. Also, our folks in Houston that are watching and our folks all around the country. Um, you know, they have worked so incredibly hard for this moment today uh, and to see a spacecraft that they built. Uh, on a, on a launch pad for the very first time just means so incredibly much and and I'll tell you what you guys is just as beautiful in person as you would have as, as you would imagine yeah but I mean there it sits we'll we'll continue giving some of these giving you some of these great views mm -hmm. and maybe even a couple of replays we're gonna hang out for a little bit we know that a couple of people were here watching including mm -hmm. our first Starliner crew that's right so we're hoping to get them over here in just a couple yeah. of minutes and Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, let me just again, you know, remind folks how we're going to be recovering the spacecraft today. That crew module that you see there, that's going to be recovered, brought back to Launch Complex 32 for evaluation analysis. Again, you know, we want to make sure we get all the data off that spacecraft. Of course, the initial ind indication here is that we've had a successful test, but, you know, we really want to take a hard look and all the data and, and hand that over to NASA and of course make sure that uh, everything worked as well as it appeared to look uh, to us. And um, the, the service module um, is another, it's gonna be recovered slightly different. Like I said, that we're gonna get a little bit of data off that service module if we can, depending on the condition that it's in. But um, a uh, combined team of Boeing, the US Army, and an environmental and industrial services company called Clean Arbors, they're gonna go out, we're gonna safe that, that vehicle, uh, and we're gonna go ahead and properly dispose of it. So really exciting. The crew module, of course, we're gonna keep around uh, possible reuse, you know, there's. Uh, of course, uh, flight hardware on there that we could potentially reuse if we needed to. Um, but, you know, once again, the, the key here is uh, those crew modules are reusable vehicles. Uh, you know, we have uh, two uh, additional spacecraft back at our uh, production facility in Florida. Of course, the, the Starliner that's going to be uh, launching here in December uh, for our first uncrewed orbital flight test to the International Space Station. And then we have the spacecraft uh, that is going to launch crew. Uh, it was actually the very first spacecraft that we built, sent out for environmental qualification testing that Alicia was a part of. And um, and we've got that spacecraft in the factory as well. In fact, you might have seen uh, some uh, photo of, uh, of our uh, orbital flight test vehicle um, complete and fully, uh, fully built and actually rolling into one of our hazardous uh, uh, processing areas for fueling, getting yeah. ready to uh, roll out to the pad. Every, everything's on track for Starliner's first flight to space mm -hmm. and to the International Space Station. Uh, we've already put out some news on that. Right now we're targeting December 17th. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna be on the Space Coast around the holidays, oh, yes. might be a good idea to come out for a rocket launch. Yep, and hey, I'll tell you this, Starliner is the very first um, uh, uh, human spacecraft both built and launched right in Florida. So if you live on the Space Coast, we really hope to see you come on out and support your hometown girl and watch her fly because uh, that's going to be really incredible. Yeah, there's a couple of things just coming up over the next several weeks. Starliner itself is going to get fueled up mm -hmm. in that C-3PF, that Correct. production facility where the Starliner is being built. Following that, it's going to get rolled over to the ULA Vertical Integration Facility. I'm trying to get all my acronyms right as yep. I go hey, through Hey, you're doing a good job. Uh, ULA actually stacking the rocket today, so uh -huh. getting it ready. And again, we're targeting December 17th for that launch. It'll be a flight up to the space station. It'll get there in just about a day, I think, is the latest dynamics that can change depending mm -hmm. on wh where the station's altitude is over time. It'll be about an, a day up there. It'll dock. It'll be the first successful docking of Starliner. They'll have it there <laughs> here, for here. a couple of days, and then we'll meet it right back here just a couple of days after. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's it's really incredible. Taking another look here at this crew module on the on the desert floor. You know, very first time Starliner takes flight. Uh, just with, I mean, it, I gotta say, you know, to to see it come down uh, and touch down on on the on the desert there under those landing airbags, it just is. 
it, we're going to be making history when it does that on a return to space mission uh, here coming up in December, like you said. Uh, but to see it today, it, it's uh, it's hard not to get a little bit emotional, just knowing the folks back at home who have just put their hearts and souls into this. Uh, you know, it's funny because we sh I showed a little bit of footage of the spacecraft being signed in Florida uh, before, and and I, you know, I, I talked a little bit about Kevin. I don't think I mentioned Jana, who was also in that uh, that that file footage. And here's a, a really funny uh, fact about her. You know, her her daughter actually says that the spacecraft is her younger brother, oh. uh, <laughs> because her mom just spends you know so much time. The dedication that the, she's put into uh, the spacecraft as one of our uh, lead wiring technicians and. You know, it's just the the Starline and Production Factory folks in Florida, folks in Houston, and all across the country who've helped us out uh, and have just put their hearts and souls into this program um, are full of folks like uh, Kevin and Jana, and uh, you know, really hoping that they are just uh, grinning from ear to ear this morning and getting ready to celebrate. And again, if you're just now tuning in, you are looking at Starliner. It's on the desert floor. That paddleboard was done successfully. Our T-Zeros, our launch time was mm -hmm. 7.15 a.m. Mountain, 9.15 a.m. Eastern. If you didn't catch it, we'll have some more replays Absolutely. coming up for you because it was over in a flash. It, I think it was from start to finish. It's only about a 95-second test or so. Correct. So it's over quick, but we got to see all of the events happen in sequence, those four launch aboard engines firing, throwing Starliner up in the air away from the pad, and then getting it in the right orientation, pitching around, using those thrusters on the side, getting good shoots or good drogues out, mm -hmm. the service module separating. Correct. Everything looked fantastic this morning. Two good mains, so still in a stable configuration. Yep. The airbags inflating and touching right down on the desert yep. floor. And like we said, those uh, two good mains are uh, certainly within the acceptable bounds of this test. Here, here we go. We're going to replay it again here uh, for you. So just in case you're just now tuning in, um, you know, at this point, you know, you see that pitch around maneuver happen um, and uh, and those uh, as it prepares to go ahead and, and start the parachute sequence. Um, you saw those uh, look to be those two drogues followed by those three pilots. Here come uh, the mains. And uh, as we um, continue to, to replay that here, I'm just going to go ahead and, and get folks uh, excited here, getting ready to welcome the uh, crew flight test crew, Boeing and Starliner astronauts. Uh, they just pulled up. We're going to go ahead and talk to them. Uh, go ahead and, and get them. Hey, come on in, guys. Come on over. Come yeah, on we're going to get everybody. Hi, come hey. on over, guys. How's it going? Good to see you. So awesome, huh? Long How's it going? No I know, long time no see. Okay, come on over. Mikey, come on over here with me. Sorry. Nicole, go ahead and get in the middle okay. of these guys. Um, all right. So um, th just an incredible test. Dan and I were out here. I know you guys were watching uh, the test nearby. Um, this, of course, is the Boeing Starliner Crew Flight Test Crew. Uh, we've got uh, Boeing's uh, astronaut Chris Ferguson, NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, and, and Mike Fink. And let me just start with this guy because this is really this here is space flight legend, uh, Mike Fink. This will be his his fourth time up to space on Starliner here coming up on our crew flight test. But in addition to that, this is actually going to be your third vehicle. So as rare as it is to be an astronaut, it's even more rare to fly on your third vehicle. So what were your impressions today of uh, today's test? Well, uh, today was really amazing. Uh, we hope we never need to use this system, but in case we ever have a, any trouble aboard the, the beautiful Atlas V on the launch pad, we know th after today's test that we'll be able to get off safely and then uh, come back and uh, try again a different day. So this uh, shows that uh, Boeing is committed to, to safety and that we are really looking forward uh, to ha flying on a spa safe spacecraft, and today really showed it. It was beautiful. So how's it going to feel for NASA to have a, a crew transport system once again? Well, it's been a long time since we've launched uh, out of the United States. Uh, we really appreciate our, our friends in, in Russia for having a launch vehicle on the Soyuz. I flew on it twice. It's a great launch vehicle, a great spacecraft, and uh, but it's uh, it's time to have more options. And uh, the commercial crew program is opening up a new industry for the United States, and it's, it's an exciting time. 
Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, I just, I know we were together over in Florida where you guys were there getting in the Starliner vehicle. And there was a moment where you were in the, in the seat uh, and you were kind of taking a look at the paneling and, you know, our human uh, factor systems engineer, uh, Selena Dopart was there and you kind of turned to her and you said, I see what you guys are doing here and it, and it looks good with the paneling. And I know she kind of was really moved by that comment. I was in there, I got a little choked up over it. Um, it's just incredible to have you here and be a part of the team. Well, thank you. I, um, I'm glad to be part of the team also. And so, of course, uh, NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, uh, this will actually be her first time to space, uh, marine uh, fighter pilot. Uh, so at this point, like I said, you were you were just out to our uh, recovery zone for mission dress rehearsal. Uh, we saw you in Florida. Is it starting to feel like uh, launch is around the corner at this point? It's starting to feel really close. It's amazing, uh, especially being here for the test. We've had a chance to be in the vehicle quite a few times, but down at the Cape uh, last week, we were in the spacecraft and it was all finished out and all the uh, final paneling was on and it looks a lot like our trainers. And so it's it, that's, a, that's good news. We've been going through a lot of the training. So it's nice to see the final products coming online and big milestones like the test today are just showing that we're getting a lot closer. And then Chris, for you real quick. so. You closed out the shuttle program and then you came to Boeing shortly after. And I mean, this program has been kind of your life for the last couple of years. What's it like to now be standing here after Starliner just took to the air for the first time? Um, so I have I've envisioned what this day would look like. Um, you know, I've, I had this trajectory of what this pad abort would look like for a long time. Uh, and to actually see it uh, happen was just fantastic. Uh, and, and, it, it, and it worked uh, pretty much the way I had always envisioned. Uh, and I really have to, uh, I gotta, I gotta give, take my hats off to the Boeing team. Um, you know, as we speak, uh, of course we had this huge test going on uh, today. Uh, on the East Coast, we're fueling our vehicle for the, pad, uh, for the, uh, the uh, orbital flight test that will take place in December. Uh, so on both coasts, we have major operations taking place to, uh, to restore human space flight from, uh, from the United States of America. It's a very proud moment for me. It should be a very proud moment for the entire Boeing team who have made this made this happen, and uh, you know, hopefully, our our NASA customers uh, uh, are equally happy with the progress that we've made, and uh, it's you know, it's a great day for the United States of America. That's right. Yeah, I, as a NASA guy, it was great to be out here with the Boeing team. I know we're all super excited too. Mm -hmm. Our NASA astronauts, the Boeing team, really a fantastic day. We don't we don't want to hold you guys up too long. That's right. I'm sure everybody wants to start celebrating because this is a really successful day. So thanks for running over real quick and having a couple of minutes with us. Really appreciate it. Thank really you. Really do. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Excited to be here. All right. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, you guys. See you so guys at later. That's a TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So at this point, you know, it's what's up next for Starliner, our uncrewed uh, flight test to the International Space Station slated for December 17th. Can't wait for that. So excited. Hope y'all all tune in uh, and watch us. And like we said, if you're on the Space Coast, you better come on out and support your hometown girl. That's right. And as we said, there's a couple of milestones leading up to that spacecraft being mm -hmm. fueled. Pretty soon it's going to be rolling out to ULA's vehicle integration facility, and it'll actually get stacked on top of the rocket. We're looking for that in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned. Again, mm -hmm. you can follow Boeing on social media, at Boeing Space and yep. on Boeing.com, yep. and then NASA, NASA.gov, and uh, our various social media sites, uh, including at Commercial Crew on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, we're everywhere. So continue following along. Thanks for waking up and watching this Absolutely. today. Starliner's first flight test. It's first time taking to the skies a successful pad aboard Absolutely. this morning. Hey, thank you very much, everyone. See you out there.